good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to downtown Montpelier. You're watching the Orca Montpelier Live production of the July 3rd Extravaganza. My name's Brent Curtis, and I'll be joined with Kathy Apgar this afternoon as we get a chance to watch this magnificent parade. Kathy, this is thought to be one of the big 10 events in Vermont. Oh, well, I would say that right now the runners are feeling that in this kind of a temperature, <laughs> but they all seem to be doing wonderfully. The, you know, the very first uh, Montpelier parade was in 1807. And I don't think any of these people were in it. Well, wait, there's somebody coming up, but I'm sure <laughs> that they're ever coming. Yes, indeed. And so it is a, it's a wonderful production. We've been away for two years, and we're hoping to get Kat, Kat, Katie Trouts here, uh, the head of Montpelier Alive, so we can have a little conversation. What an incredible job. And it's not just about the parade. This started at 3 o'clock this afternoon. There have been fun and games for the whole family on the State House lawn. At the conclusion of tonight's event, which should go about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, we'll uh, switch down to the Capitol, to the big stage, where we've got all kinds of live entertainment. So, Kathy, it is in essence a total celebration including the fireworks at the end of the evening. Absolutely. And there's a great turnout and there's all sorts of ethnic foods down on the State House lawn. Everybody's enjoying themselves. The vendors are all out here. All the businesses are open and they're really excited to welcome people to Montpelier today. And we're all glad to be here. And you know, it's kind of interesting because at one point in time we all spotted these costume people walking down the street but the majority of the people here didn't pay and attention to it. It's Montpelier. You never know what you're going to see here yeah, and certainly on the 3rd of July. It's the capital city, you know, When we had headless people driving, walking by. We had robots going by. We had drummers and we just kind of went, oh, isn't that nice? We've got to keep watching for others. You know, it's part of small town America, and certainly with Montpelier being the smallest state capital in the country, it is indicative of what happens to these small town gems on the various holidays. Now, remember, Montpelier is just coming out of a devastating flood. We want to kind of keep that behind us. We want to keep looking forward. And Katie will talk about that as we uh, interview her later on today. But the fact of the matter is, this is just a great time to say, thank God the river is back where it should be. And we're all celebrating. The stores are coming back. People are coming back to Montpelier. So it's a great, great atmosphere as we look forward to Happy Birthday America. Amen. It's absolutely exciting to come back after after last year to come back in and visit all the local businesses and see how incredibly hard they have worked to just reinstitute that spirit of Montpelier. And you know, and again, without belaboring this issue, it was just a little over a year ago that when you stood on Main Street, all you could see was piles of rubble up and down the street. Today, it's vibrant, new paint job, lots of stores, and people are coming back to Montpelier. And you know what? It's also fun to see the number of tourists coming to our beautiful state capital. And it was, to me, it was really exciting to have someone actually stop and ask questions about Montpelier. Uh, you know, they, they hadn't been here in many, many years, and where was this, and where was that? And to be able to share that with, with excitement and with other folks is really part of what this is all about. You know, I can't agree with you more, Kathy. You know, the, some of the fun facts about Montpelier is that it is the smallest state capital in the country. We're also the closest state capital to a foreign border. That, of course, is Canada. Montpelier is the only state capital in the United States that does not have a McDonald's in it. That's uh, another interesting However, we that. have incredible food down on the state <laughs> and, and my husband and I are certainly looking forward to uh, sampling some of the local, local fare up through here as soon as the parade is over. And it sounds like that's exactly what's going to happen here, simply because it is just, we're right back to that small town atmosphere. Everybody is in kind of a carnival mood. Uh, the music's been playing in the background. We're going to have some great music marching today. And, you know, we can't forget the fact that this is a voting year. It is. My <laughs> And, and we will be stressed at some point, as, it, as we were a couple of years ago, to try and keep up with the number of people running for office that joined this parade. But I think that that's also a really good sign that people are interested in politics, they're interested in government, and they're willing to give of themselves to participate in government. So they're here in, in droves. And you know what's interesting? Because Montpelier gets all the attention 
throughout the winter as legislature right. comes in and where there's our, there are TV cameras here constantly. Then we go into the shoulder season, kind of calm, and now here we are in just about the opening bouquet of summer, and here we are. Here are the people downtown. Everybody's excited. As you said, we got the food trucks here. We've got music here. We've got everything we need for a party. I'm watching, of course, the whole, the whole festivity here on Main Street has been kicked off by um, a 1K run. It started down on the, on the State House lawn, I believe, that's come up State Street, onto Main Street, goes up to the intersection around the Rotary, the intersection of Spring Street, and now they're coming back through. We've got grandparents, great-grandparents, new babies, uh, middle-aged folks, young children, teenagers. The teenagers led the pack. We, we, we could have predicted that one. The teenagers led the pack. Moms and daughters, dads and sons, dads and daughters, moms and strollers. It's been wonderful to see this great turnout of folks coming to really kick things off here. Kathy, I'm going to ask you to slide over one seat. We're going to invite Lauren Seiler in here sure. for just a moment. Where's Lauren? Come on in, Lauren. I'm going to give you that slide. Come on doing? in, Lauren. Can you get down? Yep. Be careful there. I got it. There you go. Thank you. Lawrence, are you ready for our annual interview? Yes, I am. Why don't you tell folks who you are and why you're here today? Well, um, my name is Lawrence Seiler. Um, by the way, thank you Hi for there, inviting Lawrence. me to today's Good to have show. You back. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I am the host, creator, and executive producer. Um, along with my wife, we produce a television program for people with special needs called Able Den On Air. And it's a program uh, for people with many abilities despite... Um, their challenge, and I just want to say uh, this is a wonderful event. There's lots of uh, runners, lots of uh, floats. As a matter of fact, there are some groups here today that also are in um, the parade, including the self, the Green Mountain self advocates, who also. Uh, make an appearance. Absolutely. Now, I've had a pro an opportunity to watch your program. Very interesting. You cover a number of topics. Now, I also got to see you on Aired Out. Uh, and, yeah, boy, that was a lot of fun. Yes. Aired Out was a little bit different than I'm used to, but <laughs> I've, I've done live television before because right. I'm originally from the Bronx and I've uh, been doing this for 30 years. Vermont, uh, the aired out interview with uh, J.D. Green uh, was basically telling it the way it is and the way people with special needs should be treated. And I just want to say, you know, uh, thanks to Orca for uh, letting me do Ableton on Air and um, watch out for us. We're also doing a sports show as well and some other things. But um, I would uh, also like to say, you know, thanks to our uh, sponsors and partners, Higher Ability Vermont, the Association for the Blind Vermont, and many, many others. Um, but it's extremely important to advocate for those that can't, and that's why Ableton on air exists. Understood completely. Now, why don't you give our, our watching audience some idea of what you got coming up? Uh, lots uh, coming up. As a matter of fact, this coming week, uh, not live, um, but um, this coming week I have, uh, we're talking about travel agents who um, deal with people with special needs and travel, you know, because when you travel, you need accessible accommodations. Uh, I have lots of things with health coming up, uh, including the Multiple Sclerosis Society uh, and many, many other groups. But Able Den On Air will... Um, one of the things that I'm doing, um, especially this year, uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of editing. You know, there's some things, uh, and I'm sure you know, uh, being the fact that you've been in broadcasting for a long time, there's things that we haven't aired since last year. So ah. we're going to be um, airing those things as well. So now, are you spreading out? Are you getting more involved in the editing and the producing? Yes. More involved um, as an executive producer because, look, uh, I've been in this for 30 years, but it's very important uh, to be um, in, I should say, the soup, because uh, if, you, if you don't know what's going on, especially as an executive producer, then 
you know, what's the point? So it's important to, um, you know, be in the, as, as they say, in the nitty gritty. I'll tell you what. Thanks for stopping in, and we'll talk to you later. Thank yep. you. No problem. Goodbye, my friend. No problem. All right, everybody. We're getting ready as the Montpelier Police Department starts the parade. We'll ask Kathy to come back here and take her seat. All right. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Everybody loves a parade. Oh, yes. Here they all are. Happy birthday, America. One day early. Look at this. My pillar's got an old You know, everybody cruiser. loves this a parade, and occasionally really they awesome. like a siren. <laughs> there they all are, and Berlin police is represented nice as well. Nice to have the Berlin guys here and gals. Now, you know, Montpelier just got a lot of headlines after attempting to use an EV cruiser, and their report was not particularly positive. It did um, not work out. It, and wasn't, it wasn't economical, and it wasn't reliable. They're and putting it back, the and so uh, they're going to wait Sheriff. for another time. Yep. Uh, Barry City is here. And, and here is the here Capitol is the Police. Capitol Police. Are here. Yep. The State House, and followed by Montpelier, one of Montpelier's rescue vehicles. You know, it's always amazing to me that one of the smallest cities in Vermont has a full-time fire department, and it has always maintained a full-time fire department, when so many others had had to go to volunteers. It is really a testament to the commitment of the safety of the residents of Montpelier and the surrounding communities. I have to agree with you, Kathy. Uh, you know, we're going to go back beyond the days of Chief Lawson. Sid Lawson, perhaps one of the most beloved uh, fire chiefs in the state of Vermont. And this department has shown they have stood out for decades. And it's, right now, they are such an integral part of Montpelier. Well, little did you know, you were away probably in college, but when Chief Ernie Flanders was the fire chief in Montpelier, I was the first female volunteer firefighter in the state of Vermont. I knew it was going to take two <laughs> minutes for her to get that plug in, but yes, and I'm very proud of you, Kathy. Well, and I, it, it was a novelty then, and I look around, you know, we live on the other side of the state right now, but we still maintain Montpelier roots, and I, I look around and I see more and more young women participating in volunteer fire department and full-time fire department efforts that I think it's super. Ian, it's exceptional. I think one of the hitches, and this we're going to go back to the small town genre, and that is there is now so much time requir required for basic education and continuing education. It's hard to be a volunteer anything. That's true. But it, what an important part of the fabric of any community is that spirit of volunteerism. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and certainly you're seeing that here in Vermont and Montpelier Alive. You know, the folks that give so many hours. And last year, you know, we were we were dealing with flood issues, you and I, here in Montpelier. And the level of volunteer, the volunteer spirits, we cannot thank all of those people enough. You know, they showed up when we didn't sometimes have hope. And it was awesome to see them. And I, I ran into them from time to time on the street. And you made lifelong friends when they were, you know, hauling your sofa out the front door. <laughs> so. Well, the parade is now officially starting. And coming up first, and they'll be coming into your view here very shortly, we have the Montpelier Support Committee, the SS-765. The sailors coming into town have their annual tradition for many years. They enjoy meeting and greeting all the people who come into town to participate in Vermont's 3rd of July activities, and here they are from the SS Montpelier, and we are looking forward to uh, getting a chance to, to give them a big wave and to welcome them here. Out in front is Governor Phil Scott. He's yeah. making a surprise performance in the, in the capital city's 3rd of July parade to herald the arrival of the Montpelier, the USS Montpelier troop. Now, the local VFW sponsors the troop. They give them dinner and housing, and it is absolutely fantastic to see them all here and, and bringing so much of the country together with our U.S. Navy. So and with a 73% uh, approval rating, Phil Scott, a Barry boy, local guy. It's good to have Phil back here, and it's kind of like the Lone Ranger at times. 
it's great to have these uh, these naval uniforms come through here. We're always so glad to see them. Now, coming up next, Miss Vermont 2024. That'll be Mira Siri of Brattleboro. She's a graduate of George, Univer George Washington University with a degree in photojournalism. Along with her is going to be Charlie Roya. Now she is going to be Miss Vermont teen, and oh boy, what a wonderful scenario that is. Oh, but let me tell you, 82 years young, here's Bernie. Here's Bernie, and the crowd goes wild. Everybody's favorite octogenarian right there is Bernie Sanders. You know, when I talk to people coming into Vermont for the first time, the one the, the, there's one thing you can count on. They think Vermont in terms of maple syrup, they think of Vermont in skiing and then Bernie Sanders. Bernie. And Bernie's mittens. Bernie's <laughs> mittens are always uh, first and foremost. You know, the picture of him sitting with his, these heavy Vermont-made mittens at the inaugural. Yeah, that sticks with everybody. So coming up now in the background and in full sight, you're going to see the Catamount Pipe Band. The Catamount Pipe Band is the reigning Grade 5 New England Championship Band. Now this summer, they're headed to defend the title with the regional competitions as well as peering at all kinds of events across Vermont. I'll tell you what, these guys and gals are everywhere and they are exciting. Let me tell you, there's two kinds of people in this world. There are the people that love bagpipes and the people that don't. <laughs> and there's no happy medium. But I'm telling you, I hear a bagpipe and I just get goosebumps. Oh, indeed. I think perhaps one of the most poignant things this summer was when the bagpiper stood on Omaha Beach in the celebration oh. of D-Day. And oh. wow. They're wearing the McLaren flat. There's a tartan from Central. Uh, Scotland, it is absolutely beautiful. And don't forget, they're, they are heralding in the Montpelier City Council with Mayor Jack McCullough, City Council members Lauren Harrell, Adrian Gill, Helen Cohn, and a host of others. And coming up next, we've got Let's Grow Kids, Vermont's child care campaign. They're on a mission to ensure affordable access and quality child care. Uh, an issue near and dear to my heart as a, a lifelong early educator. It's great to see people really understanding how important it is to give the best start to the youngest people in our country. A, a large turnout, and we've got a number of strollers, a couple of double strollers here, some balloons, and lots of happy faces with their movement to increase subsidy, child care subsidy to low-income families, to increase the education and professionalism of the field. So kudos to Let's Grow Kids. And followed, following Let's Grow Kids, Ann Watson. Ann just finished serving one term as the state senator representing Washington District, and now she's running, get this, re-election. She's running for re-election. Mm. You might be familiar with her from time to time as serving as mayor of Montpelier. She dedicated her life to working hard for constituents and being their voice in the Senate. Interesting. They look like they're just having fun. You know, parades are all about having fun, and we, gotta, we don't have enough of it in our world. And right behind her, we've got State Senator Andrew Perkchill. Uh, he's a Marshville resident, state senator. Uh, he's running for re-election to represent Washington County District for a fourth term. Um, and sometimes you want to wonder after that last vote in the taxes whether or not it's a good idea to be in the parade. <laughs> well, but. they're all kind of bearish on things. And here you go with Ann Cummings, Senator Ann Cummings and her Care Bears. And right behind her, we've got the Middlesex Volunteer Fire Department. Now, they're serving rural communities to keep them safe. We honor all veterans and give thanks for the sacrifices for our freedom. That message is coming directly to our veterans from the Middlesex Fire Department. And they are distributing candy treats to those kiddos lined up. And, and why don't you hop out there and get us some candy? Bread? Sure, and whatever just, you'd say. Just dash out Thank there. Thank you, Kat. They get maybe a Tootsie Pop. Huh? That would be a good treat. And as Kathy says, and we want to keep reminding you that these people are volunteers, and they give up so much of their time in order to be the first one through the door when you have an emergency. Our thanks to the Berlin Fire Department. 
All Things LGBTQ is an Orca production sharing news and interviews for the local community and far, far more than that. And next up is going to be Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. Lieutenant Zuckerman is running for re-election this year because he isn't done fighting for Vermonters. With over 25 years in public service, Lieutenant Governor Zuckerman is ready to keep working for you in Montpelier. So let me ask you a question. Do you think he grew those flowers that he's carrying? <laughs> he, is, he may have. He may have. He does. He does bill himself as a farmer, but I don't think those are quite his, for any means. Close on Dave Zuckerman's heel are the Vermont Asian American Club branch of the Barry Lions Club. Lions. It's about giving. Lions give their time and their energy. They ask others to give so that they can aid and assist those in need. Again, volunteerism is strong with the Barry, Barry Lions Club. And coming up right behind that is going to be the League of Women Voters of Vermont. This is reenacting the long journey of protesting for women's voter rights. They also encourage everyone to register to vote before the November election. Now, an interesting fact is it was the League of Women Voters that handled the original presidential debates. And it wasn't until that they took that job and reassigned it to the media uh, that it was such a powerful debate. And now seem, people seem to think it might go either way. Well, let me ask you this. Do you know... What was the most popular 4th of July song? All time, most popular. Uh, is it a marching song? It could be. Yankee Doodle Dan. There we Yankee go. Yankee Doodle, especially, you know, when it was it was done by any number of You know of the folks. words to Yankee Doodle Dan. I do. Uh, the Yankee, Yankee Doodle Dan. Uh, oh, Yankee Doodle do or die. I think, I think we're being... Of my uncle's I know, the words are a little wrong, but we've we'll got it. it right. We'll get it. And so here comes the Shada Projects. It's based in Vermont, a nonprofit organization focused on cultural education and diversity through sharing West African drumming, dancing, and other activities. Oh, yes. Here goes the Grand Luba. Just listen. Dancers, they certainly represent themselves well. And it's fun to, to watch. I love the rhythms. I love the drums here. And if you watch the people on the sidelines, we, they're like all bobble, you know, bobble people. Their heads are all bobbing along with it. You know, coming up next is probably one of one of the most community-minded businesses in the state of Vermont. Vermont Mutual Insurance Group. You know, they help insure uh, everything in the state of Vermont. Soup to nuts, door handle to car door handle. You know, it's the sunny side of life. They've been here since 1828. And, you know, they, they participate in the parade, and they are an integral part of Montpelier Alive. Our big thanks tonight to, my, to Vermont Mutual Insurance Company for not only being a great member of the community, but being a standout business in Vermont. And right after Vermont Mutual comes the Black Bear Hockey Team. Those Black Bears provide a competitive hockey team for athletes ages three and above. Thanks for turning out. Right now, you have a guest that's ready to come in and tell you all about the wonderful things that's happening today. Katie? Oh, on. terrific. Well, who could this be? Katie Trouts, how are you? I'm doing great. Great to have you here. Yeah. First and foremost, congratulations. What an exceptional uh, situation you've made here. <laughs> It's, it's going pretty well, I'd say. It is. Now, there is one very important sponsor, I think, that we need to highlight. What do you think? Yeah, so um, the parade is sponsored by Vermont Mutual, and in fact, here they are marching by at this very moment. You know, uh, we're getting a lot of buzz about lighting the bridges. You know, it was one bridge last year. That's coming up. Wow. You know, for a community that was decimated a year ago, this is the difference of night and day, and I'll tell you what, we can thank you and your staff for a great deal of this. Thank you. Yeah, we've worked very hard this past year, for sure. So before we say goodbye, what else would you like to share with us? Well, 
was just so amazing to see the community show up again and again in the moment of crisis, last year's flood, and then again here to celebrate together. And we're just knitting a really strong community fabric, and that is resilience. So I'm really excited about today. It's such a great celebration. And looking forward, Montpelier Alive is constantly looking forward. We are constantly yeah. looking forward. We have a lot to look forward to, a commemoration event on July 10th. We have a Taste of Montpelier Festival in September, and then we have this bridge illumination project, and just wait, it's going to be spectacular. Katie, thank you so much for stopping in. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to the parade. Thanks, Katie. That was wonderful to hear all the great things that you're doing. In the meantime, the folks that have come by are the group from Invisible Callus. It can be fun and colorful. Political activism takes everybody into stride. The artistic postcards are engaging. They'll help you talk about what's going on in your community and far beyond and how you can make the world a better place. Here's the senior. And now the Muppet, your senior act. These are our friends. <laughs> <laughs> the Montpelier Senior Activity Center is a lively support organization for adults 50 and up. Now, their entry tonight demonstrates the wide range of activities and services that they provide. Exercise, arts, humanities, social opportunities, weekly, weekly meals, and of course the trip. Parade viewers are invited to check out Senior Activity Center here in Montpelier. So the people on camera right now are not seniors. These are our other neighbors. These are the ones we were talking about earlier that walked down the streets totally comfortable. And uh, they certainly are a wonderful addition to the parade. coming through in her support group, Michael Pichek. Sarah Copeland-Haas is running for Secretary of State. Oh yeah, it's definitely an election year. Yeah, yeah. She would only be the 39th Secretary of State in the history of Vermont. That's, ah. that's incredible. Governor Jim Douglas was Secretary of State for almost two decades. Sarah Copeland Hans in the chariot, if you will. <laughs> in the chariot. We've got charity here also. It says charity, charity, charity. Somebody's hoping that the Attorney General will demonstrate charity. <laughs> Democrat Jonathan Williams from Barry. Jonathan Williams stepping out here for state representative. And right behind him is Thomas Renier, the deputy mayor of Winooski, and he's running for the Vermont uh, lieutenant governor's job next year. Good luck. Best of luck. Winooski is a busy city for sure. The Central Vermont Pioneers, here they come with a red GMC truck. The Central Vermont Pioneers are a family-centered group of hockey enthusiasts. Go figure in Vermont. They believe that sports are for everyone. They encourage everyone to check us out in Montpelier, see what we're about. We work hard about making the impossible possible. And certainly they have in the parade today. There's a great, that's my kind of hockey right there. You know, I'll end up on my bottom anyway, so I might as well start. Now, here. we've already seen Westview Me uh, Meadows and the Gary resident of Montpelier's senior living communities recognized for their strong tradition of caring right here in the heart of Vermont, right here in Montpelier. They're lovely facilities. You know, they Beautiful really are. Beautiful facilities. And, you know, as we all get a little bit older, it's great to know that we have these wonderful folks 
available to help everyone. Once again, filling a little bit of space here, we welcome you aboard. We're at the Montpelier 3rd of July Parade. And it is not the end of this celebratory day because the fireworks hit tonight. And that's, that uh, Capitol Lawn is going to be packed. It's going to be a wonderful evening. It's just been a great day. It was a wonderful opportunity to talk to Katie tonight. And uh, Montpelier Alive has just done a Herculean job. And you can see that spirits are up in Montpelier, and it is a vision forward. You know what's, you know what's really exciting, Brent, is that... It doesn't matter how old you are, or how rich, or how poor you are. When you hear the drums and the sirens for a parade, everybody comes. Everybody loves a parade. I can deal with this troubled friends with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill, and I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. <laughs> oh, think, my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Indeed. Westview Meta says, spread seeds of kindness. What and a now, great message. you can hear them <laughs> in the background. Once again, there's all of our friends from Westview Meadows. Hannah, Coming right up is yeah. going to be the Hannaford yes, Pipe is. and Drum yes, Corps, based in St. Albans, named after Captain Nathan Hannaford, a drum major in the War of 1812. These people exist to keep history of America alive through music. They are not related to Hannaford's grocery store. Hannaford, Fife and Drum Corps. <laughs> Let's listen for a second. And if you ever get a chance to go to Fort Ticonderoga and watch them, they're fantastic. There's Jack Sweeney. He's been living in my billiard since 71. He found and this rusted old truck in a backfield. And you know the Vermont adage, if it don't run, push it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of lot of energy to push right there. Over the course of 20 years, he lovingly restored that Model A. Isn't that something? It's a, its original luster, even though he switched it from black to red. If you're visiting central Vermont and you want a good time, let me tell you about the Valley Players out in Waitsfield. Oh, the Valley Players are wonderful. producing Spamalot, uh, the Coconut Brigade. The Valley Players Theater in Waitsfield will be putting on Monty Python's Spamalot, and it'll start July 5th, go to the 14th. Now, the evening shows are Thursday through Saturday and a Sunday matinee. Here's a hint. I went out for the dress rehearsal. This is so much fun. 
And I'll tell you, there are a lot of very, very talented people in the Waitsfield area. And well, when they all get together for the Valley Players, it's nothing but a good time. And yep. I'll tell you what, not only is it the Valley Players, but it's all the people that go to visit it there. Is. It's an evening of fun, of frolic, and of course community, because and, that's a small, and, small area. And, and it is just so much fun to be welcomed there from places all around Vermont. Yeah, they attract people from over our side of the mountain to come on over, and they have a wonderful Wait a minute, repertoire. Ka Kathy, have we sold your area to New York yet? Uh, no, we haven't We haven't gone okay, to New York yet. just but, checking. But Kate McCann and Connor Casey, their state representatives, elected in November, they completed their first legislative session in their day jobs. Kate is a math teacher at U32, and Connor's a director of Gun Sense Vermont, an organization committed to reducing gun violence. Well, since you jump that one, you get the next one. It's free. Look, <laughs> I do? Well, I mean, it's pretty easy. Take a look at the library cards. Oh, my favorite library, ladies. Look at this. Look, no, no, ladies, there. Those are libraries. There's a gentleman those involved now. Those are superhero librarians right there. They're merging with friends and supporters. And they My offer God, more than three in a row. They offer more than just just Somebody books. turn off her mic. <laughs> no, but it's so exciting to see them. You know, it's great because Kellogg Hubbard Library's been literally a cornerstone in Montpelier for almost a hundred years. Here we go with Get Real. It's always interesting to me when, when they, they switch positions during the, <laughs> during the parade lineup. And now, coming up is the Washington County Republicans. Hi, fellas. Oh, Good to see you, Michael. You. Washington County you. Republicans are here, and they're committed to supporting the candidates, and they want to get real. G-E-T-R-E-A-L is a solemn promise and a positive path forward for our state by Vermont Republicans focused on, focused on improving the quality of life for our people and the prescription of policy procedures. Now, common sense, realistic solution to challenges that don't break the bank, either for state treasury and or for our household budgets. That is the Republican Party here in Vermont. And they're busy. You know, they've got numerous candidates running here and they're all they've all turned out for this parade i'm, I'm wondering if they're going to kick off uh, this whole uh fourth of july weekend i wonder if they're going to be at every single parade and you know, we've got a big one coming up in bristol there's another one in hinesburg it's it's amazing i'd love to know how many of these folks how many miles these folks put on in a four or five day weekend We've got John Rogers running for lieutenant governor. And then we've got, looks like the Green Mountain Self Advocates. There they come. They're a disability rights group with Get Sunshine from, we get sunshine from being with friends, belonging in community. Look at the sunshine they're bringing to. Oh my goodness. Can you hear that? I hear it. It is awesome. So coming down the street behind this wonderful group focused on housing and helping each other comes a whole... Well, let's take a listen, Kathy. It's a whole hive of honeybees. Can you hear them? No. Let's <laughs> listen. Oh my goodness gracious. The Honeybee Steel Band and the Swarm, they call this a swarm. It's an activist group focusing on protecting pollinators through creative and soulful events. I'm trying to listen, Kathy. Well, I listen to what I'm saying. Their work highlights the problem of toxic pesticides and other poisons that threaten the survival of bees, pollinators worldwide. And the Honeybee Steel Band, here it comes celebrates 2024 with one hive under a groove. And coming up next is All Together Now, celebrating the interdependency and diversity of life on this earth. All together now. Well, I'm, I'm really thrilled that I didn't have to pull you away from those steel drums. I thought I for a minute you were gonna. <laughs> I thought you were gonna 
fly away like these beautiful creatures here. The Japan America Society of Vermont sincerely celebrates America's birthday. They're going to have a Matsuri, a Japanese festival at South Burlington and hope that you will join them for this free entry event. That's the Japan American Society of Vermont. Well, and we coming up next is going to be Onion River Outdoors. No one rocks environmentally friendly like Onion River Outdoors. Cheer on the cyclists of all ages and abilities. Only cyclists understand why dogs love sticking their head out a car window. Onion River has been a, just a mainstay of this community for so long and it's still going strong as bicycles become more and more popular. Now the other day I stopped in and I saw some very interesting electric bikes and they were for all shapes and all sizes but Onion River Outdoors they are the real you deal. You know our younger son uh, got his very first bike that was called Onion River Sports back then and two days ago he sent us pictures he lives in France now and he had cycled not for competition, but for pleasure. He had cycled a whole section of the Tour de France. And it all started at Onion River. They have a full contingency of all, look at, there's an electric bike for you, Brent. Oh, and an electric so, tandem bike. Very nice. So coming up next is Green Mountain Community Baseball. Don't the Vermont Mountaineers it. baseball team is a member of the New England Collegiate Baseball League. Over the past 22 seasons, hundreds of collegiate players from all over the U.S. have come to Montpelier to improve their skills. They're playing summer baseball. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't been to that field, oh, my gosh, it's spectacular. That now, they feature, these are the future field. dreams of these players, maybe looking at the major leagues. We have three championships. We're looking forward to another successful year right here in central Vermont. This is top-notch baseball. And the entertainment at Montpelier's recreation field is second to none. Now, I know they talk about the Lake Monsters, but if you want an <laughs> evening of just old-fashioned fun baseball, come on out up here at the recreation field in Montpelier, all the way out Elm Street next to the swimming pool. You'll see that beautiful stadium, and you'll hear the roar of the crowd every time the Mountaineers mm -hmm. are in town. So here's the question. Are there hot dogs? They're hot. It, it, that's a law, Kathy. You have to it's have a, a hot dog you have to, at a baseball right, game. Because, you know, I, I really love that when the monsters do the free hot dog night, but I would just take any hot dog in a grandstand. I love it. And so and here then, we have the monks of your scout yeah, troop yeah. and their float based on two important themes. Scouting is helpful and friendly. The Mitzvah Fund is a mobile veterinary unit that provides veterinary surgery dentistry and routine care to low-income seniors, veterans, unhoused neighbors, and disabled first responders. They service both Washington County and Chittenden County. An incredible mobile van here that looks like it would certainly meet the needs of any medical need for any animal. And although this is the end of the parade, it is not the end of the celebration. Now again, coming up tonight, we've got lots of fun stuff going on. We've got Dave Keller taking the main stage over on State Street, and then we've got Fair Sparrow. And it's oh, just a whole the lineup, including anthem. Patty Casey. Yep. And then, of course, tonight at about 9.30, depending on the scenario, give or take five or ten minutes, the spectacular fireworks. So, you know, it's always great to be right down there at the Capitol. But if you can't be, there are various locations around Montpelier, including North Street and up at the uh, recreation field to get a perfect view. You can see so, them from just about anywhere. I've seen them on the interstate headed over here. So it's a, it's a great show. Once again, we want to thank all the folks here at Orca and certainly uh, Montpelier Live. Thank you, Kathy. You're welcome, And thank, thank you, you to everybody for tuning in tonight. We'll see you next year. But in the meantime, let's enjoy a happy birthday, America. So long, everyone.